Modern Gaming Feels Like a Chore was a video that was recommended to me, and seeing it's the weekend, I thought it would be a perfect time to react to it. I haven't seen it yet, so let's watch it and react right now. Getting right into it, here is the video in question, and you can see it has a very, very good uh, headline. Let's uh, start watching. Modern gaming has slowly begun to feel like a chore. And before you say something like, you're just growing out of the hobby, you're just getting older. I don't feel this way towards older games that I am now playing for the first time. Yeah, you know what's interesting? Sorry, I don't mean to pause it this much, but that's a common argument that people make. And granted, I have life realities, like I have a wife and I have kids and I have dad responsibilities and work responsibilities and all that stuff. But when a game comes along, that's great like Baldur's Gate, that, that doesn't feel like a chore. There's, it, it feels like so surprising when you walk into a game and there's no barrier and it just lets you sort of play the game. Like uh, even, even Gran Turismo 7, which I've been playing a lot of lately, you had to like go through the cafe to unlock something. And it's like, if you're a, a sim racing fan and with Forza right around the corner, I hope they don't do that. If you're a sim racing fan, uh, you kind of just want to get into the action, right? Sure, you do it once, but it is a little bit of a chore. Anyway, continuing on. Or several indie titles. Now, this feeling mainly comes from the mainstream AAA games released over the last few years. And I know I'm not alone in this, as it's one of the most common topics brought up in forums and discussions in the broader gaming community. You know, it isn't just one or two niche... Retention! The, I talk about this all the time. He's. I bet he goes into retention. He's going to talk about the retention rate, and that's the problem. Look at the Resident Evil 4 game and Resident Evil 4 Remake and Dead Space and the Dead Space Remake. Those games don't have padding. There wasn't like a weird situation where you felt like you were being forced to go collect five bells or something like that and then play the game. It You just played it. Communities that feel this way, many different types of gamers, are sharing a similar sentiment. And game development technology has only gotten better and better, and games have only become more and more ambitious. So from an objective standpoint, gaming should be better now than ever before. Yeah. So why do so many gamers share this sentiment? Uh, yep. Finish Battle Pass. Uh, it's so good. Finish Battle Pass. Go do a bunch of boring fetch quests. Manage inventory. In in Destiny, I just made a video about Destiny, about how the story's gate kept behind a mission that maybe you do want to do and maybe you don't want to do, but it's annoying. It doesn't feel fun or organic. You're just kind of like shoehorned into this game mode, and then they're like, ah, I, I miss it when they would at least have you go other places. Now it's just like, all right, we need you to go do the same thing you've done 40 times. It's annoying. Um, Again, there's always the You're outgrowing gaming. You're nostalgic for the past. You just burnt out. And while these are applicable to some, well, I don't these think are the true. represents the full <laughs> picture, and the problem goes far deeper than these very surface level explanations. But they're so wrong. So I want to look at that first point. Old games don't feel like a chore, but new ones do. Why? What's the difference between new and old game design Retention that separate rate. them from one another? Well, there's quite a lot actually, and we're not going to be able to cover all of them in this video. Um, but one of the most important things to me is, old games rarely wasted your time. Yep. They got you right into the action, right into the adventure. And other than Metal Gear Solid, most games didn't have hours of cutscenes. Or How freaking on point is this video? Game, I talked about this so many times over the last few months. Retention rate and monetization are the priority to have the games developed. Games need to stop thinking they need to be 100 hours. You don't need to spend as much money as you're spending on these projects. So you don't need the microtransactions. Like there's other ways to make the properties. I, I just don't buy that you have to force people into a grindy on fun mission so that they stay in your game longer and potentially become an upsold customer because they go to your store. It's it's like the grocery store technique. You put all the chocolate bars there because it's an impulse buy. Whatever. We're tracking across open expanses of nothingness to get to the next point of interest. No farming for materials or grinding XP. No climbing hundreds of towers to reveal the dark part of a map. <laughs> and most importantly, nobody said things like, 
you gotta spend at least 20 hours in this yeah. game before it gets good. You know, you could tell right away if the game was gonna hook you. Let's take New Vegas and Starfield as examples. Okay. And we're gonna compare the first 60 minutes of New Vegas versus the first 60 minutes Hell, of Starfield. Hell, even Fallout 3. In Fallout New Vegas, you get a brief intro cinematic to set up the world of Fallout and the main plot that New Vegas would revolve around. Matthew Perry. You immediately wake up in a doctor's house. He helps you set up your character stats and character creator. You stumble outside and begin talking to a few folks in town. You learn the basics of combat and survival from one of the characters. You then involve yourself in a conflicting quest to either help the town against a bunch of escaped Great convicts or help the convicts oh, take over I the town. I overcompensated on and my And in mic. the process of all that, now you've learned about loud. skill checks and branching quest design that will affect the game forever. And in the aftermath of whichever choice you choose, you now know almost everything you'll ever need to know for the rest of the game. God, and you've I, pretty I love much the wrapped up games, your first hour of New one. Vegas right there. Obsidian then hands you the reins to just go play the game. Complete freedom from here on out. In fact, you can wake up and run straight out of Good Springs immediately if you <laughs> wanted to. Now let's take a look at Starfield's first hour. Starfield's you first spend about hour 10 is minutes too slow bad. walking while NPCs ramble to you. You pass out and wake up, create your character stats, slow walk for another 10 minutes with more exposition dumping, fight off a group of pirates it's, for about you know, 20 seconds, slow walk, and then exposition dump some more. I, I, I actually don't agree with this argument. Like, I have about 10 hours in Starfield, and I think it does a pretty good job of getting you through the basics quite quickly. I don't like that walking at the beginning where you're in the mine. Like, I feel like that could have been shortened greatly. You're a dusty. And then, like, they just ship you off anyway. So why are you? I'm not far enough in. Maybe we are reintroduced to these characters later. But I think Starfield also has a pretty quick intro. Like, you're in space pretty quick. And then you do go to the... Eh, I'm like 50-50 on this one. More go to interact with your loading screen. I mean, your ship. Walk around a barren planet. Shoot a couple more pirates. And then somehow, after that first hour, the game becomes even more restrictive and slow. And you will spend the next three hours doing nothing but slow walking and talking to NPCs to tutorialize you some more. Another five hours of fetch quests and radiant quests go by. And then by maybe hour 12 or 13, you have a similar level of freedom that you did after the first hour of New Vegas. I mean, I'm 10 hours in and I'm already flying around all over the place. I think I met this character. I I did the, the Corpo mission where you can like triple cross everybody. And that was really cool. So maybe he had a different experience. So I'm not saying his experience is wrong, but I'm just saying I didn't spend five hours in intro tutorials <laughs> like i was out doing stuff quite quickly so uh kind of disagree on the the comparable especially since it's bethesda bethesda's formula is pretty standard and likely what they're doing is they're just like well we have to teach them space travel and everything so i'm like 50 50 on this one i i do think the intro is too long but i don't think it's as long as he's describing I mean, shit, by hour 12 in New Vegas, I'd be balls deep in uncovering a cannibalism conspiracy inside the Ultralux Casino. Hell, even at hour 6, I'd already sent some ghouls into outer space. And games can often feel like a chore when they waste your time, or they- The ghoul- no, okay, hold on. The whole sending ghouls into outer space by hour 6? Yeah, maybe today, but when you first played that game- I don't think anybody by hour six was on the mission where you send the ghouls to outer space. That's pretty far into the game. Um, I, I just think this is a bad example. There are much better. You should have did like Diablo two versus Diablo four and, and the rate there to get to like the max levels and such. Uh, maybe maybe the, I don't know if that's a good comparable, but this seems like sort of a flimsy one. I feel like the argument could have been stronger and I'm always about stronger arguments. It take too long to get going. And even when they do get going, it's not that good. <laughs> and while not everyone feels like Starfield is a chore to play, I think it's yeah. more than safe to say that Starfield has been a very large disappointment for many for this very reason. It's like... <laughs> I hear what he's saying again, but it's like the top 1% of Reddit. So I don't know how disappointed most people are. Again, 
Better examples out there, let's just hear them out. If you want to explore, you'll have to go to your menu, zoom out of the planet, zoom out of the star system, there are problems navigate with Starfield, to a correctly leveled but the star point system he's trying fast to make. travel. Then you watch a loading screen. So hold on, there are problems with Starfield. So this is a problem with Starfield being restrictive in terms of how the gameplay is designed. This isn't the same argument that he's trying to make where the intro is slower than the fall at New Vegas. And you're also talking about interplanetary travel versus walking outside and going to the next town, right? It's 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 a little different and he's kind of getting lost in the point here, but screen, a landing a animation, video. and walk in a straight line for three to five minutes until you reach a point of interest. Unfortunately, none of these points of interest are interesting. At best, you'll find a copy pasted yeah. pirate camp, and at worst, you'll find a planet trait, which is useless unless you're <laughs> trying to fully scan a planet, or a cave with a few alien enemies and basically nothing in it. But Starfield is just the most recent example of a game that wastes the player's time. We could discuss forever about the 20-hour feature films in the Sony PlayStation catalog, or the overbloated and tedious gameplay design of Ubisoft titles, or other generic game studios. Or we could talk about live service games there. that every few months Good give players 30 hours of busy work to grind. See, better examples, and he has better examples in his video. I, like, I don't think the Sony one, like God of War Ragnarok, that's always been that sort of experience with the God of War franchise. So the fact that that's a negative in his mind, it's a little strange to me because that's what that franchise has been since its inception, inception when David Jaffe created it. Destiny, I get you. You could go look at like what Destiny was when it started versus the nonsense that's going on today. I made a whole video about that. But yeah, I think he's sort of... He has good points, but like he's just using the wrong examples to illustrate those points. Find out. It doesn't matter the example. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Modern games that it, love to the waste time matters. and only focus on getting you to spend as much time as possible inside their game. Why? Well, because if a game comes out and it has a 12 hour runtime, gaming journalists and basement dwellers will publicly crucify the game for not being long enough. You know, I can see it now. Bioshock released in today's timeline would have ten do, I'm curious. Do people still lambast games for being too short? I think like a minor criticism about Spider-Man Miles Morales was that it was kind of short. But like it's just a footnote other of an otherwise glowing review. So Yeah, man. He has like a really good argument here, but like I just don't know. 10 hours of cutscenes added on top of it, and several NPCs would have radiant quests to complete, with the game totaling to over 40 hours. Because longer means better, am I right? No. Wrong. That is absolutely Wrong. true. Older <laughs> games rarely would waste your time good, though. Good meme they knew that people had a limited time to play games, and that people are interested in playing other games. You know, I can play Assassin's Creed 2 over a weekend. Maybe like an extra evening on a weekday too. And that's awesome. I didn't waste two months grinding it like I did with Valhalla. And because it doesn't take so Better. long to get through, I go back. Great example. That's a great example. Like Assassin's Creed 2 versus Valhalla. Perfect example. Much stronger argument. I hear what he's saying there. Valhalla is designed so you live in that game and you eventually go to the store. That's the argument that he's trying to make. That is the much stronger argument that he should have used for the earlier examples. Like God of War doesn't really make sense. Also, like a beloved franchise, like I hear him, but I can play it at least once a year because I know it won't eat up a whole lot of my time. But what about big, lengthy RPG games? I love them, and yes, they can take a while to play through. For instance, I loved my time with Elden Ring, put close to 100 hours in my first character, and Elden Ring seems like the perfect candidate for replayability with the amount of builds and ways to approach the game. But the thought yep. of replaying Elden Ring is a bit daunting. You know, I've played through Dark Souls dozens of times, and like Assassin's Creed 2, I play it at least once or twice a year because while it's possible to spend 80 hours in a single playthrough, my replays have been closer to 15 hours. RPGs that are more dense than expansive are ones that I always find myself going back to more often, or just games in general. Again, this doesn't mean large and expansive RPGs are bad at all. They just need to respect my time. And I do think Elden Ring did do that. It's just not something I'm looking to replay quite yet. Again, really bad, <laughs> incredibly bad games to make your example with. Like, 
I don't want to replay Elden Ring because I played it for 200 hours. It's great. You beat the game. Like, you don't need to replay it. Um, but to argue that it's a negative, I don't know. That that one's weird to me because that's a great game. Yeah, that's just a really bad one. Man, why use a game that's amazing? It, it's like conflicting with the message that he's trying to put out there. And he's about to go into Baldur's Gate 3. I don't know where he's going with this one. Baldur's Gate 3 is a good example of a game that's huge. It's a behemoth of a game. But I think you can ask anyone, including myself, about their time with that game, and none of its playtime feels unnecessary or tedious or grindy. It's Agreed. just a behemoth in a good way. Every hour is made up of worthwhile and what feels like necessary content. The real difference between a good lengthy game and a bad one is playing a lot of hours because you're actually invested in the game versus hurrying through hours of tedium like in Mass order Effect. to get to the fun parts of the game. I think the Ma There Mass are times Effect in modern games, especially of. live services, that I would often be thinking about the literal chores I need to yeah. do in between the fun, doing all the live service style bullshit. Yep. Between hours of tedious quest design and more hours of inventory management, I was mostly relieved. See, he has a 12 minute video and he has awesome examples of where it's not working and it's just terrible. He should have just leaned into that instead of trying to use El a game like Elden Ring that's widely loved and even he says he loves to, to illustrate the point. But now he's getting into it. He's talking about Destiny. He's talking about Warframe and the, the mission design and why it's annoying and not fun from a player perspective, from a design perspective when I finally stopped playing the game for the night. Maybe 30% of my time in the game was actually having fun. Grinding for XP and materials to advance isn't a massive problem if the grind is reasonable, but we all know that in most games these days that just isn't the case. And again, the grind is always extended not for the player enjoyment, but to either pad out runtime in a game or make you invest more in order to become addicted. Yeah. After a while, it became sort of stressful to play these games like a genuine second job. I'm sure you've heard that several times. Whereas the games made with genuine intentions, I always find myself truly invested into because I wanted to be, not be- He got there. All right, he got there. He's making great points right now. And uh, the one thing that I'll say is the gaming landscape has certainly changed and what players are looking for when they're making their purchasing decisions have changed, but that doesn't mean the practices that are being implemented get a pass, like they're absolute nonsense. So I think he's making really good points now and he's getting, he's just like, look, if, if it's 20 hours, but it's an awesome 20 hours, that's good design. If it's 20 hours, but 10 of those hours are go shoot 15 cabal in the head and then turn in a turn in bounties similar to that. That's not fun design. That's just annoying chore. That's an annoying chore type mission because it required me to be. Games like these tend to consume my thoughts because of the world, the characters, the badass builds the I'm experimenting with. I become obsessed with it. Not saying it's healthy for a game to consume your life in that way either, but at least you're genuinely enjoying the game because of the game, yep. not because you're trying to check off a to-do list. Moments in games like, ah shit, I failed Sigmire of Katarina, and I have to relay the bad news to his daughter. I wonder where she is. And then I spend several hours playing and adventuring, thinking about Siegmeier's story and trying to find his daughter, while also working through other challenges along my journey. Moments like those are what make me want to keep playing and move forward. Now it would be wrong not to dive a bit into the reality of gaming burnout, which can also be a big reason some find gaming to Eyes. be a chore. So let's talk about that. Rise was so good. In today's gaming culture, there is a lot of social pressure surrounding the enjoyment of certain games. Like you must like this game and praise it. Or if you enjoy yeah. this game, then it's you're true. an elitist. The online culture of video games can get pretty exhausting because everyone has become extremely opinionated and upset with everyone else's preferences. Uh. Yeah, man, uh, go work at go work at a big company that covers nothing but games and then try and explain to the audience why you can't play 10 games in a month. <laughs> I'm going to do the Asmongold thing. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play that next and just keep adding games to that list that I never actually play and just play the like two games that I want to. That's how I'm going to handle it. Um, 
So we see a lot of people shy away from playing certain games and trying to go along with public opinion and play what's popular or what's considered the thing to play in the broader gaming community. And I know we've all been guilty of this, myself included. I've played several games where I really just pushed through them despite not really- I, I never thought about that. There is a lot of social pressure to play like all the games at any given time. And some genres just don't align with you. Like if everybody's playing Animal Crossing, I don't care. I don't like- I don't like Animal Crossing. Sorry, Internet. I'm never going to like go out of my way to go play Animal Crossing tomorrow. It's just it's just not my jam. If it's your jam. That's awesome. It's not for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it just so happens like the last few months, like every game is like a Destin game. And that's that's hard to balance your time with really enjoying the experience. You know, they just weren't for me and they ended up being a chore to play through. And it's easy to get caught up in this, Don't I must play this because everyone online is hyping it up idea. Um, but some games... I, I don't get the um meme. He keeps using the um meme, but I don't get it. Like, I don't think that's helping him illustrate his point. Sorry, this is just the editor brain, my editor brain popping in for a second. I don't get the um... Like... He should have showed a repetitive mission or something. I, maybe it's a meme that I don't know just aren't going to click with you and that's okay. I've had to get used to finding the difference of wanting to play a game versus slogging my way through them for the sake of saying that I've done it. At this point, for myself at least, if I'm not feeling a game after the first few hours, I'm not going to force myself to see it through just to say I've done it. Gaming burnout works. really can set in when you start treating it like a checklist of games completed. But now, I value my gaming time more than I used to. I don't feel as much of a that's just healthy. Yeah, that's just healthy. Like, just in spend your time how you feel you should. <laughs> Need to be that gamer that's played everything. And I've been better off for it with that mindset shift. Oh, Forza Horizon. I played a lot. Just saying. Gaming burnout can also just come from playing simply because of sunk cost fallacy, where you feel like you just can't quit the game. He's talking about Destiny. Game. Usually a live service one yeah. because of the hours you've put <laughs> Lost into it. Dark work. But sometimes you just need to hang up your hat and call it quits if you aren't enjoying a game that you once adored. So go, go check out my video about Destiny and why, why I barely play it anymore. Sometimes you are the problem. But, all that being said, I do think objectively, many games released nowadays, same as most movies and entertainment in general, while look flashy and have massive budgets, don't have those same things that hook a lot of players or moviegoers like they used to. If I really think of a TV show that really wastes my time, it's The Witcher Show. And that is not a problem with the source material that it's based on. The source material is fantastic. I highly recommend you read the books. But don't watch the fucking show. Talk about a piece of media that wastes your time. He got through the whole thing without saying a bad word. And I think most people like The Witcher Show. Granted, like, I, I guess there's some controversy around the most recent season, but again, sort of a strange example. Like, uh, the, <laughs> the new season of Gossip Girl <laughs> might have been a better one. Like, I hear that's terrible. Yeah, I don't know. Again, better examples out there. Like, talk about season three, at least, or whatever the season is where Witcher went to Poo Poo, Poo, -poo Town. Or what about a game like Back for Blood? That game completely dropped off and kind of flopped but the games that inspired it have lived on with healthy player counts and communities for over a decade. I think it's because a lot of these games aren't developed by gamers anymore. If you start looking at a lot of the development teams at most studios, you start to learn that a large number of the employees are just people who worked at some other random tech company prior to the game studio. Bro, <laughs> uh, he's really losing the plot now. He really had it, and now he's the... So... Guy seems good. He makes some good points. I'm going to finish out the video here. But yeah, so people who go from like tech stuff into gaming, it's because they want to work in gaming. It's not because they don't care about gaming usually. Um, sure, there's probably some people that are just looking for a paycheck. But if you're in games to get paid, like I think everybody knows for the most part, like QA doesn't pay that well. Maybe there's some producer positions that pay a little bit better. But you're usually not making a ton of bank unless you're at like the high level positions. So I, I don't know about this one. Studio and only took this job because they needed a job in their field. A lot of them are very clueless mm. as to what makes a game so encapsulating. Now I know I've already lost some of you with that thought, but I think it's pretty evident when looking at the. Well, 
he didn't make his point very well. I think that's the bigger problem. So even he's like, I think I lost me with that one. Well, then you, you're if you're saying that in your video, this is just me as a producer, like giving feedback on an edit at this point, right? Uh, you didn't make your point well enough. If you're admitting that, hey, you're basically admitting you didn't make your point well enough, so you should you should strengthen that argument a little bit. The state of the industry today. You know, when a game like Baldur's 3 comes out, made for gamers, by gamers, that really care about the experience of the player, i.e. the customer, it's yeah. easy to see why they're so successful and sell so many copies. Yeah. They become a big cultural phenomenon. We need games developed by gamers. For gamers that don't waste our time. Because that is what I believe makes gaming feel like a chore. But that's just one man's take on the idea of gaming becoming a chore. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll see you all in the next one. Okay, so he almost he almost has it. Like if he just restructured this video a little bit. But the, the long and the short of it is the point he's trying to make is retention rate has become too important of a metric. And games are being designed around this idea of retaining players and getting them to play more. Now, this is from November Hotel. I haven't heard of this YouTuber before. He has a, a notable audience. He has uh, 74,000 subs. But um, I feel like his argument was like really close to really, really good. But he would use examples that didn't really help his point and would also point out that he's not making a good point in his own video. So let me boil it down real quick about my takeaway from what he's trying to say. And I don't mean to put words in his mouth, but this is my interpretation. I think what he's trying to say is retention rate has negatively impacted games because in modern gaming, that is a very important metric that having players living in your game, it's literally something they have to report to their superiors because there is a percentage of those players that will become a purchaser of microtransactions, a purchaser of items in the store. That's why retention rate is so important, and that's why I've been talking about why that is a terrible metric that massively affects design philosophy. Same thing with microtransactions. Even having them in your game means you have to implement other systems that reinforce that idea of player retention and keeping players invested. So like Diablo 4 is probably in some hot water right now. Sure, it sold well and everything, but the player numbers are looking really, really low. Like I think Diablo 3 had more viewers than Diablo 4 for the last several weeks. And then uh, Path of Exile, a game that's much older than both of them, had like quadruple the viewership of the, it had like 10,000 viewers on Path of Exile versus those games. And Path of Exile has monetization, but somehow they are fine, but these other games are having challenges with retention. So hear what he's saying, feel like the points could have been made better, but a pretty good video overall, November Hotel, just uh, if you end up watching my reaction, he probably won't. But um, yeah, I feel like you're he's really on to something and he just sort of, uh, like using Elden Ring as a negative, I'm like, that's sort of strange. That's a that's a strange one to use as a negative. There are Valhalla, which he used later in the video, is a much better example of a game that feels padded, right? And that's what he's really getting at. So that would be a better example because a lot of the stuff you do in Valhalla is rather nonsense. Uh, most of the things that you do in Elden Ring, it's all great. Like you're, you're constantly building up your character. You're constantly chasing bosses. Anyway, just my reaction on the video. I think it's pretty strong. I understand the point he's trying to make. feel like he could have made his points a little bit stronger. So hopefully this video like reinforces with uh, other examples and backs him up a little bit because it's not meant to be a dig or anything. Let me know what you thought about the video. I appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell if you haven't subscribed yet. If you have, just hit the like button. If you want to become a member and support the channel, you can become a member. Just click that join button right down there at the bottom. The animation should click on here in a sec. I got to time this better because the, the arrow, bing, there it is. All right. I'm going to get out of here. Check out my last uh, reaction video. I think it was gaming is unfixable. And that was my reaction to that. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye, everybody. Have a good weekend.